Hello folks, it's time for Friday Fromage from the Farm again. I'm Kate Johnson, I'm here at the Art of Cheese in Longmont, Colorado, my cheese making school located on my dairy goat farm, hence Friday Fromage from the Farm. Although some of you might be watching this after the fact that it might not be Friday anymore, but it's still Fromage from the Farm. So, um, let me just press something there, okay. So what I wanted to talk about today isn't really exactly about cheese. What? This is Friday Fromage from the farm, but we're gonna talk a little bit about what goes into making cheese. But to start out with, I am just gonna talk briefly about two cheeses, but just to give it context to what we're gonna talk about. Because what we're gonna talk about today is cheese molds and presses. And so what I wanna start by saying is that there are kind of two broad categories of cheeses, fresh cheeses and aged cheeses. That's one way you could describe cheeses, especially from a cheese making perspective. Most fresh cheeses, not all, but most fresh cheeses don't have a lot of form. Think of like chev and fromage blanc and maybe cream cheese and cottage cheese. You know, they aren't a wheel of cheese, typically. We might shape them into something after we make them, like a log of chev, um, but for the most part, many of the fresh cheeses aren't formed. They're soft little nondescript cheeses. Um, and then hard cheeses are typically formed, and other cheeses might also come in a wheel um, that are pretty soft. And so let's just start our discussion today with two different cheeses. On my little cheese board here today, I have a wedge of Montazio, and this is definitely a hard cheese, and it was made in a wheel of cheese, in a cheese form or mold, and a cheese press. We'll talk about that more in just a second, but I selected this one because I am teaching this class tomorrow. So the other um, cheese on my plate here is a little mini wheel of what I call Humboldt Fog style cheese. It's not truly Humboldt Fog because I made it as opposed to Cypress Grove. Um, and it's a very tiny little wheel. You could make this in any size, but this is formed, right? It is in a wheel of cheese, but it is not pressed. All right, so both of these cheeses are aged cheeses. Both of these are formed cheeses in a wheel, but one is pressed, this one, and one is not pressed, this one. So that gives you a little context to begin with. So to start our discussion today, we are gonna start by talking about those forms. Most of the time you'll see those referred to as molds. It molds the cheese into a wheel. I don't like to call them molds because I think it confuses people between the mold or the form and the mold like blue mold, white mold, red mold, so on. Um, so I like to call them forms, but just know that those are interchangeable. Most of the time, if you're buying a form, they're calling it a mold. So just to not confuse anybody. So that's the first thing you need. That in and of itself is not a press. That's just gonna give it its shape. So let's talk briefly about several different types of forms or molds based on the different types of cheese. So initially I showed you this cute little mini wheel of my version of Humboldt Fog, and it was made in a mini basket. This is a petite basket, and it's perfect for making a little tiny wheel of cheese. Now, this is just a basket. It's not designed to be put into a cheese press. This works great for a cheese that's going to knit together just by gravity. Oops. So what I did when I made this cheese is I scooped the curds into here and just let them drain and they compressed into a wheel of cheese. Now there's lots of different kinds of baskets. So here's a little bigger basket. This is known as a disposable ricotta basket, although it's really not disposable. It's just a little more brittle plastic than say a basket like this. This is also basically a ricotta basket. It's a little bit larger than a, a standard ricotta basket, but it's made with a more pliable form. These are very inexpensive. This little petite mold, I think is 50 cents at New England Cheese Making Supply. Of course, you have to pay for some shipping and whatnot. This one is about a dollar. I think you buy them in a dozen. And this one's maybe six or seven dollars. So pretty inexpensive. They work great for formed wheels of cheese that don't need pressing. All right, now there are other formed cheeses that don't need pressing that come in other shapes. 
Like here is a form that's shaped like a pyramid. The Valencay is made in a pyramid. Here's one that's shaped like a heart. Cour de la Creme is made in a heart. Now, I could have made this little humble fog in either of these, all right? So these are forms also, but because they're not exactly symmetrical, um, well, I mean, they sort of are, but they don't lend themselves to pressing. These are for cheeses that are gonna have a shape, they're gonna have a form, but it's gonna happen because of just gravity and the natural compression of that cheese. Now, sometimes we will use a more rigid form like this. This is a bottomless, this is actually a hard cheese form, but it's very similar to a camembert form, and it's bottomless, and I'll teach you how to use these if you ever come to a class, but this is also a standard form that is great because this could be used, see it has straight edges, and this one actually is a hard cheese form, which I'll show you the difference in a minute. If I was using this for a softer cheese, like a camembert, I would just put something on the bottom, some kind of a cheese mat to hold the curds in there. Don't want them all falling out the bottom. And then I would just scoop those curds in here and the gravity would just settle them down into a wheel. I could use this same form with something called a follower. This is the follower. And what would happen in this case is I would line the form with cheesecloth, I would put the follower on top, it would follow the curds, and I would press that cheese with this. Okay, so this is um, a hard cheese form, but it's very adaptable to either type of cheese. Here's another type of a hard cheese form, a little heavier duty, and it actually has a bottom. You can see it has little holes in the bottom and on the sides. Um, and it also has a follower. This one's a little bit bigger, so you might use two or three gallons of milk, whereas that other one was for about a gallon of milk. It's a little hardier, and I still would use cheesecloth with this, even though it does have a bottom, but this is another hard cheese form. One more example of a hard cheese form. This is one I absolutely love, but these babies are pricey. So this is called a Cadova form or mold, and this one happens to be a Gouda, and so it's rounded. The top, the follower is rounded. I don't know if you can see in there, it, it, it's rounded, and the bottom is rounded. What makes these really cool is you don't have to use cheesecloth with them because they have a lining. It's a mesh lining that's kind of like built-in cheesecloth, and it's both in the form itself and on the follower. So these are really nice because they save on labor and they make them in a pretty little shape, but these are really expensive comparatively. For instance, this little, these are both one gallon forms. This little one's maybe 16 or $18. This one, when I bought it was $80. I mean, that's kind of ridiculous. You can get something similar to this. Um, this is a French form. Um, you can get some American made ones. At least I think they're American made for maybe half that now, but they're still kind of pricey. All right, so when we're using a form, we're going to end up with a wheel of cheese. So here's an example of a wheel of cheese. This was about two gallons of milk. I think it was made in this form. And someday it's going to be an Emmental, a nice little Swiss cheese, all right? And then sometimes we're making a wheel that's shaped a little differently. I don't know if you can see this. Um, this is a tricolor cheddar. It's in a vacuum pack right now for aging, but it has that rounded edge, and that was in that Cadova form. All right, so that's the form. Now, when I was first learning how to make cheese, I was making a lot of fresh cheeses. Soft cheese is easy, easy equipment, not a lot of time to wait, but eventually you wanna move on to making a hard cheese. And I'd say the two most daunting things about making a hard cheese at the beginning are, what kind of press am I going to use? And how do you use it? And where do I get one? And how much do I have to spend? And how am I gonna age that cheese? Because it has to age at cellar temperature. So today I'm just gonna talk about the presses. But the press is separate from the form. You put the curds into the form or the mold, and then you have to have something to press the cheese to get it all to knit together. All right, so if you're a commercial cheese maker, most commercial cheese makers, I would say, are using either a pneumatic press, air pressure, or a hydraulic press, press which is water used as the form of weight, or a lever press. Um, some of those we might use in the home um, context, 
but most of those, a pneumatic press and a hydraulic press, they're probably gonna be a little too pricey for the typical home cheese maker. And they're really designed, all three of those are designed to press a lot of wheels at one time. So usually those cheese makers are making anywhere from a five gallon wheel to, you know, Comte made in France might be a 200 um, pound wheel of cheese. And so they're gonna need some big boy, like a big beefy press. Most home cheese makers aren't making cheese um, that, that big of a wheel, and we're also not making that much cheese all at one time. So most of us aren't going to use a pneumatic press or a hydraulic press. There are some lever presses, and I'm going to show you, um, but still, there are a lot of choices to make. So I've got out here in my little classroom six different ways to press your cheese. And I'm gonna walk you through that and then show you each press and explain kind of the pros and cons and maybe the price point of those different presses. So that if you're thinking about getting into making a hard cheese, but you're a little daunted by the whole press thing, I'm gonna try to unravel some of that mystery for you a bit here. All right, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna turn this around and I'm going to actually put this on me so that I can be hands-free. All right, so we're gonna start with this first press here. We're gonna kind of go in order from maybe complexity and expense, roughly. All right, so this is a hard cheese form from New England, or press from New England Cheese Making Supply. I really like this press, but it's expensive, it's a little complicated, and it has some drawbacks, but I still love it and I use it a lot. So let me just explain to you, and I'll explain why it's expensive. So this is the basic um, you know, thing that you're gonna set everything on. This is a, a stainless steel drip pan. Really nice because we can just set this at the edge of our sink, and when we press the cheese, we're pressing the liquid, the whey, out of the, the wheel, and this just drains right into your sink, which is nice. Now, this particular press comes with a stainless steel mold or form. So these two items really add to the expense of this piece of equipment. Um, you could have a similar type of press without stainless steel that would probably be a little cheaper. But the, it is kind of nice because it's really heavy duty, it's easy to clean. This will hold about three gallons of milk, typically, depending on the cheese. And then it has a little stainless steel follower. So it's a little disc that would go right on top of there and press onto the cheese. Now let's just, it also comes with these two neoprene little forms. Let's pretend this is your cheese. So I'm putting the curds into the form with cheesecloth. And then I put the follower on top. But now I've got to press that cheese. So um, there's nothing to press against here because it doesn't stick up over the edge. A lot of times people will put like a can of some kind in here and I do have a can, let me just grab it so I can illustrate that for you. So you might put like a can on top of this which is gonna press on your curds. And then this particular one has two bars. This first bar is kind of a stabilizer bar and you get it in there and kind of line everything up. And then this one operates with springs. So the springs are going to simulate the pounds of pressure or the pressure per square inch. So here's our little springs, and then we put this top bar in place, and you can see here there's a little gauge, and it has some little notches in it, and this represents how many pounds of pressure you're using. Now the way it works is you have these little clips that you put on top. I've got this loaded a little too much, so hold on one second. Oops. <laughs> I knew if I was trying to simulate this, I would do some things a little goofy. So bear with me for just a moment while I figure out a way to show you this. I, I thought I had it all figured out, but obviously I didn't quite. All right, we're just going to put that like that now. We'll pick this back up. Obviously, whoops. Obviously, if I was really making cheese and I dropped some things on the floor, they'd all have to get sanitized. Okay, back to where I can now put my little top on and put these little locks in place. All right, so the way this press works is that I've put these little locks in place and you can see that they have a little nubby there and when I put them on here, they're gonna hold this in place. I push down on the springs, that's pushing with weight on this can which is pushing the curds and how much how far down I go with the spring tells me how many pounds of pressure I have 
All right, so and then the cheese is in there and the whey is dripping out. It's, it's, really, it's really nice. Now, one thing that's really nice about this is it's, it's very um, good for a lot of weight because these are heavy duty springs. It's also nice because I don't have to guess this is telling me how many pounds of pressure. I really like this press, I use it a lot, but it has a ma two major disadvantages. One is the price tag. This thing is over $250, which is just unnecessary. You don't need to spend that much on a press. The other problem with this press is that it doesn't follow the curd. And what I mean by that is that I'm pressing the curds, and right now the curds are about here, but as I press them, and the whey leaves and the curds knit together and, and closes up all those little air pockets, the curds are going down, but this is locked in place. So I have to keep double checking to make sure my pressure is still the same, because it's not going to automatically follow the curds. I'm gonna to have to reset it as this wheel of cheese gets smaller. Right, so that, those are the two disadvantages of this press. Expensive, and it doesn't follow the curds. Still love it, use it all the time. All right, now I'm gonna to come to a second um, press that a lot of times you'll see these like on eBay, they're kind of homemade. They also operate with a spring, but they operate with screws and a spring. And there's all different combinations and forms of these. I have to tell you, I have never gotten these. I don't like them. You can tell this one's filthy dirty. It's been sitting in my basement unused for a long time. But I'll give you the basic idea. So there's a spring in this case. Sometimes the spring is just on the top. But this one has these springs on the bottom. I actually lost the spring on this side. And then you put your cheese in there. So let's just borrow this can to be t pretend it's our cheese. All right, so we put our cheese into the form, obviously with some cheesecloth. We put the follower on top. And then this thing has this little piece that goes on here. It's on a big giant screw. And I probably am not using this quite right. I think these are supposed to be on the opposite side here. But like I said, I don't like this press and I don't ever use it. But you'll see these, these screw uh, center screw presses. And some people do like them. Um, I just don't. Now, I have my curds loaded up a little bit too full here to really demonstrate this. But basically, the way this one works is... Once I get this screwed down a little bit, the little bolts come through here. Let's see if we can get them to come through. Oh, I'm too, I'm too high up with my curds. So hold on a minute, we'll just take these out so I can demonstrate this. All right, so this comes through here. I'm trying to do this with this thing in front of me. We put these on, clamp them down, and then we use this to push this centerpiece down to push the um, follower. And so that's gonna eventually go down and connect. Now, the problem with this is, I don't really know how many pounds of pressure this is. You know, I've got this spring that's making the whole thing kind of compress, but there's no real gauge, and so it's a very trial and error thing. And in fact, I think when I got this one, it said, you know, like, three turns is X number of pressure, pounds of pressure, and five turns is this. And I just found this to be incredibly inaccurate, confusing, and I didn't like it very much. So no offense to whoever developed the, the um, screw press, but you'll see a lot of these for very affordable that are homemade, and I have just not found them to work very well. All right, so that's my personal opinion. And if you love your press that has a screw, that is awesome and that's, that's great because everybody should find equipment that they like. All right, this next one I'm gonna show you, I know so many people that swear by this press. This is known as a Dutch press or a levered press. I have to be honest with you, I have never used this. This, is, this was made for me 
It's lovely. It was actually made with the, the wood from an old deck that I had. My friend's father took the deck apart and cleaned up some of the wood and made this beautiful Dutch press for me, and I've never used it. So my apologies, but I'll tell you the thing I don't like about this press. It's ginormous. It's just big and awkward, and it's hard to store, takes up a lot of space. So that's the main reason I haven't used it. I just have found other more efficiently spaced things. The good thing about about this press is it uses a levered um, action. Um, now that's both good and bad. It's good because you don't need a lot of weight. So for instance, if a cheese calls for 40 pounds of pressure, you don't literally need 40 pounds because it's levered. So you put some smaller amount of weight out here and that arm that's sticking way out there really increases the pressure on your cheese. The Problem is you have to have a conversion chart to know what that is. You have to know how much weight equals how many pounds of pressure. And this was a homemade press and I would have to Google that and look it up and I just never did because I had other options. Someday I'll get around to using this. Like I said, I know people that absolutely love Dutch presses. The biggest drawback for me is it's just big and bulky and awkward to store. So I don't use this press very often. Okay, the next homemade press I'm gonna show you, I absolutely love. This was made for me by um, a friend and I just love this little press because it is so simple. It's simple to use, it's simple to store. In fact, the version, um, we used to sell these in my classroom, these little dowel rods would come out, and so the whole thing could store in a tiny bit of space, which I really loved. All right, but this one, they're glued in, so I can't take them apart. So in this case, we would take our form, we would put our curds in there, these, this mug is pretending to be cheese. We put our follower on. We put our little can on top so that there is something there to press on. And then we put this little board on top and you can see that it's pressing now on the can, which is pressing on the follower, which is pressing on the curds. And then we just stack some weights on top. The only thing I don't like this particular press for is if I have a wheel of cheese that needs a lot of weight, because this is gonna be just direct weight. This is great for, I'd say, 10 to 20 pounds. You know, you can put two pounds on, you can put a jug of water on top of that, now you've got eight pounds. I have more of these little weights I can stack up. And the great thing about this little press is it is gonna follow the curds. So there's nothing locking this in place. As long as this is pretty well centered, it typically holds really well and it doesn't fall apart. And as the cheese goes down, the press follows it. And so this is just a simple little thing. I mean, that thing probably took my friend Tim all of a half hour to make. And um, super inexpensive very effective. I use this little press all the time, but I'm about to show you the best press ever because this press is so incredibly simple and you can probably make this one for free in about 10 minutes. This is the infamous bucket press. Oh my goodness. I, if I had known about the bucket press when I bought that expensive one, I probably wouldn't have bought it. All right, bucket press. You get three buckets. Make sure they're food grade and, or at least the center one is food grade. You can get these free by going to a deli or a bakery and just asking them, do you got any buckets you're gonna throw away? Most of the time they do. I got these at Target. They were filled with um, neon colored uh, frosting in their bakery and they just gave them to me. All right, so the bottom bucket is gonna become your sink, basically. The middle bucket is going to be your draining table. So you're gonna drill some holes in the bottom. Not too many, because you don't want to, you know, structurally damage the bottom. You're gonna put that bucket inside the first bucket. It's not going all the way to the bottom, right? These are stackable, and there's a big space here for the way to drain in. Then you're gonna take your cheese form. So let's just use this same one here. We're gonna take our cheese form, put it in there, fill it up with our curds, put the follower on, put our little can in there if we have that type of a, a form. And then we're gonna take the top bucket and just set it on top. Now I gotta get a little prop to show you one little disadvantage of this, but how we fix it. 
All right, so now we don't even need weights because this is a pretty big bucket. This is only a three gallon bucket. If you need more weight, you could do it with a five gallon bucket. What I've done is I took a jug of water and that's about eight pounds. So I, mar I put the water in the bucket, I marked it eight pounds, and then I just figured out half of that's four pounds, half is 12, another half 16. I can just fill this with water, and, it, and water is essentially free. I mean, I know it's not completely free. And then I set it on top. Now, if your curds are way up high, this is gonna wobble, and so what you're gonna just do is take a little towel or something, wedge it in on the edges here to fill in that gap, and now you've got this completely free press. It will follow the curds. It's a draining table, a sink, a press. It's kind of ingenious. I love this. Now, if you didn't want to use water, you could also just put inside here weights or water, uh, a jug of water or anything like that. Works so great. If you want, if you missed this, you can go on to, um, my website and on the blog, I have um, directions for how to use and how to make the bucket press. So that is so, so simple. It really is effective. I have pressed cheddars with 50 pounds of weight with this bucket press, works great. Now, last but not least is the bowl and the weight. Now, most cheeses don't press with three pounds of pressure. But in my intro to hard cheese class, I introduce you to a cheese, it's very famous now, called Guido's cheese, that literally only needs two to three pounds of pressure. You can put that cheese in a hard cheese form, you can put your follower on, you can put your little can on, and then you just put a two or three pound weight on top and it's gonna just drain right into the bowl. Super simple, you don't need any real press for this because the weight is so small. Don't have weights, how about Shakespeare? A book, all right? That's about two and a half pounds. That's gonna work great for that cheese. All right, so don't be daunted by the whole idea of the cheese press and all of those decisions you have to make. There are definitely ways around it, and those are some of my favorites. All right, so I gotta go, because I gotta do this whole spiel over again on Instagram. So if you joined me late, you can go over to um, Art of Cheese Longmont on Instagram, and I'll be doing this whole spiel again. So, hope to see y'all again next Friday, or maybe this weekend. We're teaching Manchego tomorrow. No, not Manchego, tomorrow's Montazio. Um, Parmesan on Sunday, Manchego next Thursday. So go to my website, theartofcheese.com, and come make cheese with us. Now that you know pressing isn't that hard. All right, everybody, have a great weekend, and thanks so much for watching. Yes, and I see that Diane says the bucket press is great. Yes, it is. It's the best invention ever. All right, see y'all later. Bye-bye.